Now there are sports cars that are track capable and then there's this 911 GT3. This thing is a track car that's been road readied. It's a subtle difference, but my goodness, what a big difference. The key difference between the GT3 and other 911s is the naturally aspirated 4-litre flat six boxer engine. It twists out 502 horsepower and 346 pound-feet of torque. The free revving nature brings a blindingly quick response to throttle input, thanks in part to the six independent throttle bodies. This format is essentially the same as the power unit used in the GT3 Cup racer. The engine works to drive the rear wheels through a seven-speed twin-clutch transmission that was tuned specifically for the GT3. A six-speed manual is offered, but the twin-clutch is so much better. It has the uncanny knack of being in the right gear at the right time, and it rev matches on a downshift heading into a corner under hard braking. At 3.2 seconds to 100k, this is not the fastest 911 in the stable. However, when you stand on the gas, it most certainly feels like it, and especially when the engine comes on cam. When that happens, the exhaust system begins to wail, and it does so right the way through to that 9,000 RPM red line. It is as sweet as it gets. When it comes to handling, the GT3 is sharp and then some, along with a fully adaptive suspension that changes the damping according to the drive mode selected, comes rear wheel steering. Now there are normal sport and track driving modes, each of which changes how the GT3 feels. It also has a two mode stability control system. Do yourself a favor and leave it turned on. The numbers this combination of abilities brings is so good that during the test, the GT3 pulled 1.8G through corners and a 1G load under hard acceleration. Mercifully, the ceramic brake option does a very good job of scrubbing off speed without fading when they're used to the max. Again, when the brakes are hammered, the riders are subjected to a 1.5G load. One of the reasons this GT3 feels so glued to the road is the fact that it gets a derivative of the 911 RSR's front double wishbone suspension. This brings a sharper turn in, better stability through the corner. Just don't stand on the gas too hard because it will wag its tail. The changes to the GT3 suspension are such that it does not share any of its parts with other 911s. Elsewhere, there's a reconfigurable instrumentation panel and a solid infotainment system. Key here is the attention to detail. The optional carbon fiber bucket seats not only hug, they are 12 kilograms lighter than the stock units. Likewise, the hood and that overly loud but functional rear wing are made of carbon fiber, so the GT3's curb weight is capped at 1,460 kilograms. That rear wing, by the way, adds 50% more downforce than the outgoing car, and when it's set for track use, it ups the downforce over the rear wheels by 150%. Now this GT3 is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but for those few that appreciate its inner qualities, it is one of the very finest. In not too technical terms, it's as much fun as you can have without taking your shoes off. So here's the question, where were you 32 years ago? I know some of you weren't even a glint in your father's eye. As for me, well I was in diapers but found time to get motoring TV off the ground. And today I like to think we've got one of the best automotive video libraries in the world. If you agree, please give us the thumbs up and also subscribe, we really appreciate it.